Hello. It's Saturday night and uh, I'm walking up a hill. <laughs> I'm in the glorious Peak District and behind me, down that track there, there's the beautiful village of Edale. And that way, through the fence, is the beautiful mountainous mass of Kinder Scout. And I'm going on a wild camp. Do you fancy coming with me? Because <laughs> I'm going on my own. And it's the first time I've wild camped in 20 years. And even then, I've never actually wild camped on my own. So, this is going to be an interesting night. Um, before it's even started, um, there's a potential for thunderstorms later on. So, tonight's adventures could be, could be cut short somewhat. Um, but, we'll see what we can do. Right, the destination for tonight is Grindslow Knoll. Um, I'm hoping that nobody's beaten to it. Um, because I will be very disappointed. Just to prove where we are, Grindslow Knoll is where we're headed. Um, I'm a bit later leaving than I planned. I had some rucksack packing issues. <laughs> Um, yeah, maybe that's for another time, but I'm hopefully going to um, get pitched as early as possible really, because it's now about 8 o'clock, so I've got plenty of daylight left, but there is some rain moving in, I've had a few little spots already, so I'm hoping that I can get pitched before the downpour comes because I think that's what we're going to get later on. So I'm going to get my head down, get tabbing, and I'll come back to you in a little while. Um, once I'm up the top, goodness me, I'm out of breath already. Right, let's have a little bit of a look around, shall we? So that's where we're going, somewhere up there, um, over there somewhere, I think. And then we've got the wonderful Great Ridge behind us. Lou's Hill standing proud. Um, and Mam Tor at this end. You can just make out the, well, I can just make out the trig point on the top. It's a very, very overcast evening. It's very stormy. Like I said, there has been some, some hint with the weather forecast that there could be thunderstorms later on. In which case, I may have to GTFO. Um, but anyway, let's crack on. I'll come back to you in a little while. That's if you fancy sticking with me. And I hope you will, because it could be funny. <laughs> I'll speak to you all in a bit. Hello, we're here. Um, that wind sounds quite bad. Um, here we are. Grindslow Knoll. I do apologise if the wind is bad. But that's my view for the night. I'll try and shield that from the wind a little bit. So, looking along. God, that wind's bad. Looking along the Great Ridge there. From. Uh, starting to see on this TV screen. <laughs> and the wind is horrific. Right, so we've got Mam Tor straight in front of you, and then along the Great Ridge, Blues Hill standing proud, and Gwyn Hill just made out in the distance there. The camera that I'm using, it's not a GoPro, it's a sort of GoPro copy thing. I'll um, explain more about it another time. Um, it's fixed, it's sort of super wide view, so it's kind of weird looking through the screen. Um, and there's my tent. That's the uh, Lux Outdoor Mini Peak 2, bought from Backpacking Light. I was going to do a pitching video, but to be quite honest, when you see what's coming in behind me, um, I just wanted to get it up, because uh, it looks like it could turn gnarly very quickly. Um, 
to crack a little shelter. It's the first time I put it up in anger. Um, it's not go it's not going as smoothly as I would have hoped. Um, I've had a bit of trouble getting the obviously I've got arse into the wind and I've had a bit of trouble getting that taut at the back. It's still got a good bow in it where the wind's sort of pummeling it. Um, I've managed to kind of fiddle it, pulling it a bit tighter, but when I've pulled it tighter, it's putting a lot of stress in the zip at the bottom of the back door there. Um, I did think about running a couple of extra guys from here. I've got some uh, spare Dyneema, but they're not built for guy lines. As soon as I put any tension on, I could see um, there was a bit too much, a bit too much strain going on the stitching, and I could see that ripping in the night or earlier. So I've sorted it. I pulled it tighter, but I'm just concerned about the amount of stress that's on that zip at the bottom. Um, I think if the wind gets up, it could be popping that zip open. It might be down to me. Um, I'm a I'm a site camper really, and. Uh, the tent that I use sort of pitches itself really. I don't have to stress too much about it, but and I've had to modify. This is the sort of inner nest, which I'll show you very briefly. Like I say, I'll do a full review on this at another time, but with a mosquito net hanging off there. And you can see there that's sagging in really badly. I need to kind of play around with it a bit, but I've had to pull it away. It, it kind of fixes it little um, bungee points all around here. These things here clip onto the corners on these um is it mutton mitten clips um but if i fix it into that corner over there into the corners at the back and um, the the uh flies coming in and actually touching the the mesh so i've just moved it over and uh, used some spare pegs to kind of shift it more into the center and away from the fly um but i think i need to tension tension the corners up a little bit to straighten that uh, straighten that net out a little bit. I'm actually a little bit too big for the mozzie net, to be honest. But handily, this end opens up, so I can leave that open and uh, I can still sort of have the benefits of a bathtub ground sheet, but without having mosquito net falling in my face. I guess probably my my other alternative is to bin this as a um, well, not bin it, but not use the shelter and uh, just maintain that for when. I'm out with my little boy. The idea is that he can sleep in the shelter, in the in the nest, as they call it, and I can just chuck a bivvy on the floor in this extra space. But there's tons of room for a a shelter that packs down the size of a a sort of Zephros one or, or thereabouts. There's tons of room inside. Obviously, I've got that move forward. Normally, when it's pitched in pitched properly, there's an extra sort of six or eight inches here to use. But and I'm waving this camera around an awful lot. I do apologise, guys. It's the first time I've ever really attempted to make a video. Um, so it's a night. It's a night time of first. It's the first time I've wild camped in 20 years. It's the first time I've ever done a solo wild camp ever, and um, it's the first time I've used this shelter. Uh, first time I've made a video. <laughs> um, it's the first time I've taken that route up from Edale. I normally would come up Brightsbrook Clough. I love Brightsburg Clough, but um, I was late getting into uh, to Edo, so you get your out of the wind. Ugh. So I decided to to come up the more direct route tonight. But once I'm in my little my little hut here, it's quite a pleasant view. Um, although, like I say, that weather is building in behind me, so I'm gonna. Dig into my brand new Osprey rucksack. It's a Kestrel 68, if you're wondering. Um, which is bulging! All my gear seems to be massive. <laughs> um, but I'm going to get a brew on. And uh, catch my breath. <laughs> so uh, I shall come back and speak to you in a little while. Hello, welcome back. Time for some dinner. Um, <clears throat> deploying my brand spanking new. Uh, Primus Etta pack light, which was um, kind of recommended to me, um, and then uh, as it was recommended to me, the link that was sent to me just happened to be a belting offer from um, from Cotswold Outdoor. 
uh, was reduced from 95 quid down to 55 and you know I just bought a set of the cheap uh, what they call carry more pans so I think you get four pans in a kit that they all packed together and I just bought them uh, I think they cost me about 20 quid and they were clunky and big and I thought oh, this isn't all that good and um, I was going to just use a normal sort of um, remote burner and build a windshield and all the rest of it and I thought by the time I've paid 20 quid for the pans and um, and paid for the burner and then either bought or built a windshield and um, I'm kind of kind of knock it on for like 55 quid anyway so I thought now nah, let's go and get it so um, I've just christened it I've just made my first brew and I'm gonna get some dinner on so what are we gonna to have tonight well I've been watching a lot of you other YouTube ch chappies and you wild campers and I see a lot of you using these things uh, look what we found so we're having uh, Tees Valley beef meatballs tonight, and I've, so we're going to have that, and we're going to have that with some Tilda Basmati rice. How's that, eh? That should be a feast fit for a king. I could really put a light on, shouldn't I? It's a bit dark in here now. Well, so far so good. Um, let's get rid of that last bit of water. So far so good. Um, on my first wild camping experience the tent is up I've had my first brew and I haven't died yet um, oh, I've just opened that that smells lovely wow Ooh, delicious All right, let's get some of that in there then oh, fan dabby dozy fan dabby dozy I'm going to waste any of that yummy sauce um, so yeah while I'm cooking this, I might as well tell you a bit about me and what I'm doing here. Um, I've been a hill walker pretty much all of my life, as long as I remember. Probably about 10, 12 year old or something, the first time I climbed a hill and fell in love with it, and I've been doing it ever since. Um, but I've never really done any wild camping. Um, about 20 years ago, myself and a friend of mine who is no longer with us, sadly, um, we walked almost all of the um, the Ridgeway long distance path in the south of England and it was very very good it was a bit of fat coming out the bottom of the see that um, and it was a very good uh, very good few days and we I think we camped three nights um, but really we were only playing at it you know we didn't really know what we were doing um, I mean the sort of normal attire for us back then hill walking was like um, army combat fatigues and uh, uh, cotton t-shirts you know um, woolly jumpers to keep you warm if uh, if weather turned bad enough. Now well, that's the trouble when you do these out of the thing, I guess, because you're supposed to do them in the microwave, aren't you? And I guess when you do them in the microwave, all this yummy fat that's at the bottom would just melt into. But when you're um, doing it in the pan, I could get my spork out and scrape it out, but to be quite frank, I can't be bothered. Right. Um, get the rice in. So yeah, and I've never really done any wild camping. Although I do, I have done quite. Oh, I do do quite a lot of site camping. You know, weekends away with the boys, sort of thing. Of course, a lot of rice, but hey, whatever. Whatever. I might need to add a little bit of water to that to get it going. Um, right. So let's get this lift then and get it on. Let's get it on. Um, so yeah, I've I've been wanting to, to do a bit of wild camping for yonks and yonks and yonks and. I've all, because all my kits kind of geared up for side camping, you know, it's not easy to make the switch because obviously it's a very different kit and, and kit's expensive, isn't it? It's not cheap. So um, when people have like asked me in the past if I wanted to kind of come away and, and do like a long distance path or do any wild camping with them or whatever, um, then uh, I know this isn't switched on by the way, I'm not going mental. <laughs> I'm just giving it a bit of a stir up. It looks luscious, man. Um, I've kind of said, oh, I, you know, I've, I said, oh, I can't, I'm not, I'm, I've not got the kit, sort of thing, you know. Um, I've kind of always been put off by the price, you know, the, the cost of upgrading. 
Oh, this is amazing. It gets hot so fast. Um, but then just recently, um, I started paying more attention to the, the, whole, the whole subject of wild camping and stuff. Mainly through watching, um, watching YouTube, really. Um, specifically, um, Dean Reed, for those of you who watch YouTube. Um, oh, bugger's gonna hurt. Try to turn it down to a simmer. Put it out. Cool, oh, blimey. All right. Um, and I just watched a few of Dean's videos and I thought, that looks amazing, you know? I really want to do that. And, uh, but then the sort of realisation came that, you know, I can't really. It's, um, I, just, I just literally haven't got the money. And then I kind of thought a bit about it and decided that maybe I could. If I just sacrificed a couple of bloody well, Alice is going like the crackers. Sacrificed some things that I have in the garage, some redundant hobbies, and uh, one of those was um, I used to do a lot of uh, shooting, air rifle shooting, um, target shooting, and. Um, pest control, you know, rabbits and pigeons and all that malarkey. Um, but I haven't done any, I haven't shot for years and years and years. And I, I, had, I had, I said I have, but I had a lovely rifle, really good bit of kit um, that I had for a very long time. Um, cost me an awful lot of money. And I was just, I just never wanted to part with it, you know. Um, but then I just thought, well, it's sitting there doing nothing. And I want to go wild camping. <laughs> so, Think about it, Graham. Think about it. How are you gonna? How are you gonna? Um, how are you gonna get around this? So I uh, yeah. eventually, eventually sold it. It took some doing, mind, but I did eventually sell it. Put that in your pocket. Quickly. And so yeah, um, the last couple of months have been spent researching and watching lots of YouTube videos and asking lots of questions on Facebook groups and all this malarkey, you know. Uh, and building up to this tonight. Um, and here I am, finally there. I've, uh, I've finally done it. And you know what, I feel really good. I'm, I was expecting to be a bit, not scared, but a bit nervous being on my own. Um, and I could have waited. Um, I mean, I could have waited till maybe next week or something and, and come out with Dean or there's, there was a couple of other people who um, were possibly available um, next weekend, perhaps. But uh, I couldn't wait, to be quite honest. I just couldn't wait. Um, all this shiny new kit and it just needed using, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, here I am. I just thought, you know what, let's just, just bite the bullet, Graham. Just get out there and do it. And What's the worst that can happen? Werewolves will come and get you, but hey, they'll eat you quickly enough and you won't know anything about it, so may as well just get out and <laughs> either either have a cracking night on a mountain or, or, or get eaten. So uh, I decided to, to take the chance and come out, and here I am. So, so far, so good. Shelter's up. It's um, doing its job. It's keeping me nice and sheltered. Stove is doing its job. Camera's doing its job, at least I hope it is. Uh, let's just check and make sure that's still recording. I'm not talking to myself here. Yeah, still recording. I'm not talking to myself. Um, so yeah, here we are. In the glorious peak. I do love it up here. It's a beautiful part of the world. It is, it really is. And um, I mean, the Lake District is my mecca, don't get me wrong, I love the Lake District. But Peak District being only an hour away from where I live is, um, is very handy and it's nice to see it. 
from a different perspective because normally I'm out in the middle of the day and I'd be long gone either back at a campsite down in Edale or back home sat on the sofa watching the goggle box so it's kind of nice to be out here and seeing it when well as far as I can see I can't see any lights on hilltops or anything so I'm guessing there's nobody else around which is kind of reassuring and also quite daunting anyway this is just about ready so I'm gonna have a munch I'll come and have a chat to you again in a bit bye for now Hello. <laughs> Stuff just got interesting. Um, what was just light rain earlier on, as you can probably hear, has uh, picked up. The wind isn't too bad. I'm not concerned about the wind yet. It's definitely building though. Um, but the rain is hammering down now. Well, <laughs> I guess this is uh, called jumping in at the deep end, isn't it? Sounds amazing, doesn't it? I love the sound of rain on a tent. It's just one of the best best noises in the world. I just I love it. It's definite though. You're probably struggling to hear me on there. Um, but yeah. Feels weird. It feels strange being here on my own. Um, it really does. I, in it, not I'm not I'm not frightened, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not scared of anything really, but just, obviously, and especially now as the weather's building, you know, it's that kind of, just kind of sudden realisation that, right, I'm, what, 600 uh, metres up or whatever, and, uh, not sick, well, yeah, probably am, yeah, nearly, I'm nearly at the top of, top of Kinder, 550 metres, something like that. Um, and I'm on my Jack Jones, there's nobody around. Um, and in a way that's a good thing, it's a, it's, a, it's a good feeling because it is that thing of, of total self-reliance, which I've never, really, I've never, well, I don't think you can ever experience it, can you, unless you've, Unless you've done this, unless you've soloed, camped on top of a mountain, you've done it. I don't think it's the same when you were somebody else, because there's always that kind of safety in numbers sort of, sort of thing, where, you know, even though there's only two of you, you can look after, you, you can have to look after each other, you know? But when you're on your own, <laughs> you're on your own. And I don't think that anything can kind of prepare you for what that actually feels like, you know. Um, I mean, don't, like I say, don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not complaining, I'm not saying oh, I'm going to pack up and bail, because, <laughs> to be quite honest, I wouldn't fancy walking back in this. But um, it's, it's a very, very, um, it's a very strange, strange sensation, and I'm... I'm happy. I'm very happy. It's very exciting, and, and I, in, in some ways, it's kind of it's kind of this thing like I could have waited and I could have come out with somebody else, but I chose not to. I chose to, to just grasp the nettle and, and go for it, you know. Um, I could have checked the weather forecast. Well, in fact, I did, and I knew it was going to be rain tonight. Um, didn't expect it to be this heavy, like, but. Uh, but it didn't bother me. It was just, I, I just kind of thought, just get out and do it, Graham. Just just do it. Just get it done. And, and to be honest, the, the gnarlier it gets tonight, I think I think I think that's going to be a good thing. If I have a proper Brahma tonight, and you know, I kind of even if I've got to go through the mill a bit, even if I'm you know popping ten pegs in an hour or two and 
you know, or, or lightning, thunder, thunder comes in, and I've got a, I've got a GTFO, then, then that's great as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's that thing. I've done it. Then I've done it. I've done it, and I've, I've not just gone out on a nice, calm summer's evening and, you know, slept in a little tent. I've, I've come out on a mountain top in weather, on my jack, and done it, and that feels good. That feels really good. It feels really good. It's cool. I'm definitely a happy camper right now. Slightly nervous happy camper, but I'm definitely a happy camper. Definitely. God, that's building now, my dear lad. Whoa! It's kicking off. This is strange, man. Very strange. Very strange. So anyway. I'm going to have a bit of a sort out in here, try and, um, try and get myself ready for, uh, for some kit. Uh, if I don't come back to you before, I'll speak to you all in the morning. Thanks for watching me so far on my big adventure. here in the glorious peak district this morning and um, tell you what it's got a bit of porridge on the go there look lovely i'll take you out and have it a bit of a show you around not that there's much to see this morning apart from fog cloud cloud, fog's cloud. we're right up in the clag Down there somewhere is the Vale of Edale. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Uh, right, let's get back in the tent. Oh. So, coffee's bubbling over. Look. If you can call it coffee, it's a poor excuse for coffee. Anyway, so yeah, a bit of porridge on the go. Look at the pan in me. Um, this bloody stove is excellent, man. I'm really impressed with it. So anyway, uh, I think when I left you last, there was a bit of a, a brouhaha happening. There was a storm. I'm not sure if it was in full rage by the when I finished speaking to you, but um, it was certainly in full rage very soon after. And uh, Lasted for about, probably about an hour. Quite angry wind and driving rain. Um, and eventually it, it, it died down and um, slight bit of calm. I've got a bloody hell, it's burning on the bottom. Um, a bit of calm descended and the rain turned back into drizzle and just Um, and uh, yeah, I thought all was good. And at that point, I'd kind of, I kind of thought, well, I'll not bother trying to go to sleep while it's raging like this because if I have to just get out of here, then um, you know, if I'm still awake and still up and about and still dressed and I haven't got a sleeping bag to pack away, I can just you know, I can, I can get out quick. Uh, just got the sleep when it calmed down just got the sleeping bag out just got everything sorted mattress blown up and everything else <laughs> and it came back again it was absolutely raging for about another only it didn't last very long the second time i was only about half an hour but uh yeah it was um it was quite nasty at, at times but uh but good um i i enjoyed it actually it was quite exhilarating to be truthful um It was, yeah, it was really good, really good. I ended up having a reasonable amount of kip. Uh, probably got to sleep about half past 12, something like that. And 
well, I set my alarm for half past four, hoping to catch the sunrise. <laughs> Some chance. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've been awake since, well, I've been awake on and off through the night, but since I got up at half past four. Did my housekeeping, got my sleeping bag and everything packed away. Scrub the gnashes, make myself feel somewhat human again. I've just made a cup of coffee, which I'm yet to drink because it's like hotter than the sun. And uh, I'm having a bit of porridge. Just thicken it up. So, my first wild camp, almost completed. Oh, bar the. Uh, or bother packing up and getting home, I guess. So it's been fun. I'm glad I've done it. Um, can't wait to do it again, to be honest. And, you know, really, <laughs> I can't get much worse weather than I've had last night. So I'm kind of ready for anything now, I suppose. So this is just about done. I'm going to uh, munch on this. And I'll get packed up. Um, I might say a few words on the way back down to the car, but the way the weather's going, I think I'll probably just pack everything away, get my head down, and just get back to the car and get home. So, thanks very much for watching, if you have done. Um, like I say, it's my first video. I'm planning on making some more if this goes all right. I've never done any editing before, so goodness knows what this will turn out like in the end. But I hope it's watchable at the very least. And... Uh, Hopefully, my video making and wild camping skills will improve for future adventures. So, I'll say bye for now, because I don't think I will be speaking to you again. Thanks for watching. Take care now. Bye-bye.